All right, so this is uh, part two of the elder son's agenda and the father's, but we included the uh, prodigal. Um, and so who knows how far I strode, strayed, strewed uh, from this, uh, these notes. Um, but <clears throat> when it comes to agenda, we, in that we find out what's important, what we hold as important and what is priority to us. And it's been my experience personally and having been in ministry for years that most Christians think that their priority is Jesus and their life and the things that they pick and choose to do tend to go contrary to that. <clears throat> I guess that's another point of condemnation. I use these things because I think if we hear them, we'll go, hey, you know, that might be something in my life, and I would really like to get after the Lord. <laughs> but but uh, anyway, um, but within, within each person, we find out, uh, especially when it comes to dealing with problems or the devil or whatever, even other people, we find out uh, if our agenda with the Lord is, if I be lifted up, which signified, speaking of him being on the cross, in fact, I've got it right here. <clears throat> this is, uh, you don't have to turn there if you don't want, John 12, 31 through 33. Now is the judgment of this world. So there's the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. Oh my God, look how powerful this is. Dealing with two major things right here, and if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. And then I like this last little part here. And of course, he's talking about the cross. But said, this, he said, signifying what death he should die. Okay. First of all, the thing I got out of it, and I, I started looking at it, you know, how the Holy Spirit kind of goes, so I started looking up. And there's a lot of, not a lot, but there's a, a certain amount of use of this word signifying, and a lot of times it pertains to death, the word, signify. And it pertains to signifying your death with Jesus, making a stand and signifying, kind of like going, this is, you know, Satan or world, this is my death with Jesus. I'm sig signifying this to you that I am crucified with Christ. <laughs> anyway, so he's saying, now is the judgment of this world if I be lifted up. In other words, uh, the answer, you know, or the method, how about that? The method you use for defeating the flesh or for defeating the devil or, or dealing with somebody that is, seems like the devil to you or is in the flesh or is, you know, whatever. You're having a problem with anybody. What is the method? Is it, is it you know... If I be lifted up, or and I've said this for years, or we go to if Adam be put down. I, you know, you're wrong, and I'm going to put you down. I'm going to say bad things about you that are going to put you down, so it'll lift me up. Well, that's the wrong lifting up. First of all, we want to lift up Christ. Second of all, we want to lift him up on the cross, and we want to signify that manner of death for ourselves. So, what are we doing? Are we exposing? People, are we cursing? Are we making people look bad? Um, because we think that that's how you deal with the world or with Satan or something like that. Well, Satan's running loose in here. I'm not here, but I'm just using this as <laughs> Maybe back over in the... <laughs> but... But, I mean, our, our natural tendency, our natural charismatic tendency is to start rebuking the devil. Anybody ever read Jude or any of that, you know, stuff like that? Uh, you ought to read it, you know, and how to deal with the enemy and what the Lord says about it. <clears throat> but we, because we've, we've taken the Jesus of Nazareth approach, we rebuke the devil, we... It's like we start attacking the devil. <laughs> you know, he's attacking me. Let's attack him back. You know, but Jesus said, "This is this is how I deal with the devil," and it says that in Hebrews. 
that through death he destroyed him that had the power of death, that is the devil. And the word destroyed there is rendered inoperative. So, um, you know, do we, is, is our default our own death with Christ or is it like the, um, like the elder son? Because his was the cross too, but he wanted to apply it to the prodigal. Come on. You know, oh, I believe in the cross. And I believe the flesh is dead and da 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 as long as it's somebody that I don't like or somebody that I don't approve. There are people I don't approve. So they need the cross. Well, you know, this might surprise you, but I think that very few of us are God approves of us. <laughs> I mean, just being honest with you, I don't think there's a lot of him going, man, I really approve of you, you know. He approves of his son. And our only hope is to be in son, but the son that we're supposed to be in is the crucified. Did you know that? That, that is the truth, the crucified. The resurrection life is the lamb. Did you all know that? Good. Um, the, and without that, we're just like everybody else. We're just finding fault and and getting upset over this or that, and I don't like the way Trump did this, or I don't like that, or I don't like, has nothing to do with that, you know? It has everything to do with, you know what? I notice stuff in me that is wrong. Excuse me for just saying one person, Trump or whatever, but, you know, I notice stuff in me that is wrong, and I immediately know I need the cross. There's no, there's no question in my mind. <laughs> you know what I mean? And sometimes I notice stuff about someone else, and I'm, that's what makes me notice what's wrong in me. Because I'm looking at that instead of that, him lifted up on the cross. See? And there are times that I have to just put everything else away I have to go, as it were, into that place, whatever that place is, and I have to say, Father, you need to get me right with your way of seeing and your way of see, uh, seeing things and viewing things. You need to get my spirit lined up with your spirit. And Father, I don't want to come out of this room, you understand, whatever, I don't want to come out of here until that's working in me. Now, the truth is, you do have to get up and go to work or get up and go do this or get up and there's, you still, but you're still in that room that says, I am not coming out until I know that it is your son and that spirit. You know what I'm talking about. There's times when you're so in tune with that nature and lamb spirit that you're, you're there with him. But there are times that you're not. And when, for me, when it's that, I don't want to touch anything. I'm afraid to touch anything. I just want the Lord, and it doesn't matter what I'm doing. I mean, you know, and you know this too, because I know it works in you, but, I, you know, I find myself speaking in tongues for no reason. You know what I mean? Just, oh, wow, you know? And, or, or I find myself praying under my breath without even realizing, and then just going, oh. and I find my heart just being... Melted, and you know, when you're doing things too, even though you're in that room, when you're doing things, you kind of forget and you find that you're in a good place because you sink back into that place saying, I need you, Lord. That's a good place. Even though you're not there yet, you keep finding yourself going, I want your spirit. When it's all said and done, I want to signify what death I should die. And make it real. Make it real. Make it real. Not, not doctrine. Not, you know, what's real in my head. <laughs> it, has to be, it has to be real in our lives, in our hearts, in our words, in our actions. And this, folks, speaks to every one of us. See, there's no one exempt from this. And thank God. 
because it makes us all in this together. Praise God. <clears throat> all right, so let me just read something here. Have I seen a time thing yet, Kelly? <clears throat> All right, the elder prob probably heard that his brother repented. The elder probably heard that, maybe from the servant. The servant says he repented or whatever. So to the elder, the feast meant the father received it. The father received him. This guy did all of this stuff, and he just said, okay, I forgive you. And now look, and it happened like that. This ain't right. This ain't right. This ain't right. No, no, no. You ain't right. Excuse my Texan. It's not. It's not that. Well, you're not going to be able to convince an elder son that that's not right because it's all about being right or wrong, good and evil, the law. You broke the law. You do, you know, you do the crime. You do the time. <clears throat> But the, the fa he said, to him, the feast meant the father received it. And, of course, the feast didn't mean that at all, did it? It didn't mean he received the prodigal at all. But the elder would never receive it. He is after blood, destruction, and defaming. That's what he wants to happen to the prodigal. Is that right or wrong? That's what he wants. As I said, he, he recommends the cross. He believes in it for others. <laughs> and then the father's agenda. The father has one agenda. Let's bring the sacrifice. Let's bring Jesus into this. Let's bring Christ crucified into this. Let's bring the sacrifice. Let's kill it in front of the prodigal. Let's do it right in front of him. And let's teach him. That you know about that death and about the life that gave itself in death, but then let's teach that it's not a drudgery, it's not negative. I'm sorry, but it's not negative to die to lay down your life, it's not, it's a feast to the Father, and you'll never enter that feast as long as you're saying, All right, I don't want to, I don't want the cross. <laughs> you don't want the cross anyway uh, <clears throat> so I wrote in the person of the sacrifice the father slaughters then buries the dead and embraces the new the, in the person of the sacrifice which is Christ crucified the father slaughters the prodigal in the person of that isn't that good yes. for us yes. you try putting yourself to death without that that, that one. Um, and then he buries the dead. Death, burial, and resurrection. He buries the dead. And he's, he's applying this to the prodigal, but the reality to the father is the son. Okay? And then the father embraces the new. So when he hugs the son, he's hugging the son, not the prodigal. Well, it doesn't matter to the elder. He, you know, that's wrong. You shouldn't be doing that because he doesn't know, as it were, because I'm using this language for these last two things, he doesn't know the agenda of the father. He doesn't know what motivates the father. He doesn't know what the priority is to the father. As long as he's devoid of that, there's no hope because he's under the law and you, nobody makes it out from under the law. I mean, you know what I mean. As long as you're there, you're stuck because you have to fulfill the whole thing. And the Lord made it that way to eventually bring the elder down to go, my God, I messed up too. So, so <clears throat> all right. So I wrote that. So that's the father's agenda. And then I wrote, but there's, another father John 8 43 and 44 Jesus speaking why do you not understand my speech even because you cannot hear my word you are of your father the devil Jesus you're condemning us I feel condemnation 
and that. Uh, you know. I've said the devil's in you, but I didn't say you were of the father of the devil. Jesus is worse than me. <laughs> Scott, Scott's going, yeah, that's right. Wait a minute. <clears throat> and the lust of your father you will do. And the word lust is not sexual or whatever. It's just the desires that he has you already have in work in, in you, if this be the case. Uh, he was a murderer from the beginning, or here's what I put. Uh, yeah, I did put it down here. He was a crucifier from the beginning and abode not in the truth. He was a murderer. He was a crucifier from the beginning. He's always a crucifier. You're either the crucified or you're a crucifier. You're either a, 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 a active crucifier or you are a silent one like Paul who gave, you know, let them lay their things down at his feet while they did the work. But it doesn't matter. You're into crucifying other people. That's all. That, that's the only reality that I'm talking about in relationship to that. He abode not in the truth. He abode not. He didn't abide in the truth. Because there's no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. So why cannot the elder son clan get the message of the cross do y'all hear my word the elder son clan they're scottish you know not really <laughs> <laughs> but there is a clan of elder sons did you realize that there is there is a clan of elder sons it's uh, they don't they may not even know one another but they're all of the same clan because they have the same mind so i said why cannot the elder son clan get the message of the cross they have the mind of their father it is a crucifier mind not a crucified mind um, <clears throat> so i wrote it is as if the elder and prodigal have two different fathers now that the prodigal has gone through the process the the prodigal has the father and the elder is out there with his father. I put the elder, what, what time have I got? Okay. The elder wants the prodigal to be seen in all his radiant failure. That's what he wants. He really wants that. He doesn't want to be right with the father. He wants to be, you know, the elder wants the prodigal seen stripped bare and seen as a failure. The father only wants to see his son out of the prodigal. We're still talking about agendas. The elder wants to see the prodigal seen in all of his radiant failure. The father just wants to see the son in him or out of the prodigal. And that, that offering, when he offered the fatted calf, that offering was him giving his son, the son, in death to bring about the son in the prodigal. Death is the only thing that's going to do that. But see, death will always stay with you because you'll, if you're going to deal with anything, it has to be lifting up the crucified one. If I be lifted up, I'll draw people to me. If you put down Adam, it doesn't work. Nobody's drawn. The, the elder clan may be happy. <clears throat> All right. Well, we might just... <laughs> well. One minute left, and I... I have this great last section here called Picking a Sore. Picking a Sore. So we're not going to get into it right now, but I will make it exciting for you. Somebody that just keeps picking at a sore and they never let it heal and they just pick at it and pick at it and pick at it. <laughs> Still like me? You never did. All right, let's pray. Father, we do want your son so that the father can get what he wants. <clears throat> we want him 
formed as the son. We don't want to just be happy um, at the wonder of being called sons of God without it yet appearing what we shall be. But when he, the son, appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. So, Father, help us with that bridge. Help us, help us, help us, help us. Father us into the Son. Father us into the Son. And we ask it in your Son's name.